Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm grateful for the new year. It's been, oh gosh, I don't know when I did my last video, but uh, sometimes I have trouble coming up with an idea that was just this old brain. <laughs> I'm grateful for the supplies that I have. I'm grateful to be able to be doing this video. And this is just going to be a simple, classic tile. Uh, like I said, I was having trouble deciding what I wanted to do. It's just a thing I go through. And I went to a Mexican restaurant at lunch with my sister today. And I happened to look on their back wall, and it has been painted beautifully. And I will insert the picture here so that you can see it. And I thought, wouldn't that make a pretty tile? Because it looked like flux and mucha and floors. So uh, let's do it. Something fun and easy. So we're going to be using, uh, today I'm going to be using a Micron PN. Uh, for some reason, it's like almost all of my Micron O1s have gone <laughs> bad. But uh, I'm going to use a Micron PN, a blending stump, and a graphite pencil. Well, let's get started. And I'm also going to be using a three and a half inch white tile. Zoom in a little bit. So again, I am very appreciative of the supplies that I have. This is a tile that I have cut from Fabriano Tiepolo paper. And uh, it's I do it because it saved me money, so, but it's the same size as a regular Zentangle tile. Okay, so we're going to start with the four corner dots. Okay. Oops. And then I'm going to add a border here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Wavy is perfectly fine. Okay, so on that sign or the wall, the mural had something very similar to Rick's flex in the center. And so the way they had it was they started with a circle. And I'm just going to put part of that circle here. But actually, let's just go ahead and put the whole thing. Okay, so we'll put a circle here. And then we're going to put an aura inside that. Just, just making that same line just inside, and then I'm going to put some orbs inside here, and if I end up with a little bit of space, I'm going to fill that in, and I'm going to turn my tile so that my hand stays comfortable. Always remember to breathe. Breathing's important. <laughs> and relax your shoulders, relax your hand. And this pen is doing so much better than my Micron O1s were doing. Okay, so 
the next thing on that picture was large flux leaves like this. And we're making them big at the bottom. And it came in a little bit smaller as it came down. Okay. Do the same thing on this side. And then our last one. Okay, so that's pretty close to how that looked. And then we're going to put our line at the center. And a nice big orb at the top. Not just a dot, we're going to actually put an orb. If you happen to be in my area, which is, I am halfway between Houston and Galveston in League City. Uh, the restaurant I went to was called Mr. Sombrero. And it's one of our favorite places to go. And for some reason, this was the first time that I really started looking at the wall and this may have been there the whole time we've been going and i just didn't notice okay so there we have that now coming from behind they had a big fat mooka so we're just going to come this way up around and of course I'm not copying that picture exactly just enjoying this okay so that's a big mooka let's do that again on the other side so we're just going to start down here at the bottom and going to come out and around and then Almost like I'm making an orb here, coming back and then stop and come back the other way. Okay. And that's close. <laughs> close to what they had. All right. And then they had behind it looked just like flux. So I'm just going to make a line that goes across. And when I come to one of these lines, I'm going to go under. And you might see a bit of it there. I'm trying to kind of aim that other corner. All right. And then I'm not going to make it too small so let's say that our next line is here and we're going to go across go under there under and stop now we won't see the line right in there so let's just come down to this one make a line these are not perfectly even Thus, the name of my channel is not perfect because we're not looking for perfection. We're just enjoying the process. And then I'm going to go ahead and put one across there. Then, so that I can kind of follow this line, I'm going to turn my tile over and start across here. 
going behind that one, behind that one. Okay, so this is our goal. Another line. Another one here, maybe one right there. Okay. Now we're going to go across again. So I want to go from this corner over to that corner. And I like to start in the middle because it gives me something to aim for. Okay. And come back. So now I'm going to switch, go across this way, just like we did on the other side, we're just making a square grid, but we have it turned. That one's definitely smaller, and it's okay. What we're looking for is the process of doing Zentangle and enjoying the method. We're not worried so much about the results, thankfully, because this looks kind of wonky, so we'll just call it a wonky mooka. All right. We can come back in here, and I'm going to add just a little... Hatch mark down here along the bottom. And then we could put something into the center of these. But let's just go ahead first and finish our MOOC. And I'm going to put like a curved line inside of each of these. And then I'm going to fill it in. OK, so make sure you can see what I'm doing. I'm getting to that area where these lines meet, making a curve. So it's not just a plain square. And I'm going to try to make them close to the same size, but they don't have to be. Now, the one at the restaurant had a lot of color in it, but we're going to add some shading, and that'll kind of add to it. So just take your time, and we're just adding these little diamond-type shapes at each of these intersections. This one. We got a little bit sloppy, but it's OK.
And what did I learn here? So. I really enjoy going back to some of the very original patterns from Zentangle. And I enjoy doing the classic tiles. I love looking at the Zentangle inspired art that so many fantastic artists share on Facebook and Instagram. But uh, I struggle with, well, design and coloring and things like that. So, uh, Simple is just better for me. Mm, let's see, that would be behind. This is a corner. Just gonna kind of fill that in there. This would be very easy, if you enjoy color, to make each one of these a different color. And sometimes I do that with uh, watercolor pens. My preference actually is to color my paper first, but I haven't done that for these classic videos. So Southeast Texas right now, where I'm at is beautiful weather for now. And I hope that you're doing well wherever you are. I know it's been a struggle lately for a lot of people. Okay. So let's try some shading now i don't think i've missed anything and let's start here and just add some graphite at the bottom of these petals And of course, make this your art. If you want to do this a little bit differently, please do it. Enjoy what you're doing. Um, let's go ahead and smooth this out. I'm just going to pull it toward the center with my blending stump. Okay, and the other thing I'm going to do is just kind of put my pencil on the side and make like a C shape in here. And then I'm just going to soften that. I'm not going to fill it in. Just kind of round it a little bit. 
Okay, and it makes just very simple, almost like a gemstone or pearl shape. Okay, and then just softening this a little bit more so it doesn't look like a straight line going out. And I have some graphite on my blending stump, and I just want to put a little bit around these orbs that I put. Mostly when I'm doing this, I'm not an expert. I'm not a trained artist. I just think, well, what if I added a little bit of shading here? So I could say not much because I'm not adding anything to it. But, okay. Now I'm going to take my pencil again and I'm going to go around the outside of these petals. And this will make it look like it is above the floors pattern. Go down in between there. Come back up around. And this one is on top of this mucus stem. So I put the shading there also. And then we're just going to soften that. If you wanted to, you could fill these in and make them black. And I'm just kind of moving that out a little bit. On the mocha, I'm going to do kind of the same thing that I did down here. Just I have my pencil on the side and I'm making that C shape. And do the same thing over here. And then again, taking my blending stump and just softening that, pull that around a little bit to make it look round. And then the same thing on this one. Just kind of pull it around. Okay. The graphite looks more harsh <laughs> on the video than it actually does on my paper. But let me tell you something. If you think that you've added too much. One thing you can do, this is a kneaded eraser and you can just come back and just very lightly go over what you did and that'll pull it up just a little bit and soften it. Okay. There are no hard, fast rules in Zentangle. If you want to use an eraser, you can use it. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is this is the way that I like to add a little bit of contrast or 
shading to uh, floors. So I'm going to just kind of turn it on its side and put just a little bit of graphite. Looks like an L almost here. That one went behind. So just keep adding a little bit of shading, an L shape, very soft. Don't um, put a harsh line. Oh, I see one that I missed. Okay. And you can see that I did not get these all the same size, but it's okay. This is not a contest. We're not being graded. We're just enjoying the process. Okay, did I get them all? Looks like it. Can always come back. So now we're going to take our blending stump and just soften that. And if you think you've got too much on it, which I think I still have too much on my blending stump, you can take um, a nail file, just like this, and just clean it up a little bit. Because mine is definitely getting too dark. Okay. And then come back. Yeah, that's much better. And then just very softly. Uh, very softly blend these. And actually, I'm going to put some shading around the mucha. I didn't think about that because that's going to make a difference. It is also on top of the floors pattern. So let me come around and just add some graphite along that. Don't be afraid to add shading. I didn't do it in the beginning. It does make a difference. And if you think about it, take a picture of your pile before you add shading. And uh, you can see, like Maria says, it's the icing on the cake. All right. So go back and do that. And this one. Just soften your graphite in each one of these squares. Okay. a little bit here and then I'm just going to take my blending stump and go over the general 
outline of this. Kind of softens the border that I added on there to begin with. All right, there we go. Yeah, this can definitely use some color. If you decide to do that, that would be nice. I'm going to add my chop over here. I would encourage you to put the pattern names on the back of your tile and the date. Okay, so again, that was Lux. And floors and mocha. Just a very simple tile. And if you wanted to, uh, since we made these kind of big, you could even Leave these open and put other patterns inside if you wanted to. If you want to share what you did, you can use this tag uh, on Instagram. I am at BBL Tangles and on Facebook, it's Barbara Buford Langston CZT. All right. Thanks again for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this. I see a couple that I missed. Remember to um, hold your tile at a distance. Okay, hold it out at arm's length. It does make a difference in how it looks. If you're not sure about it, come back the next day and look at it again. It always makes mine seem better when I come back the next day for some reason. All right. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, it's Friday. Actually, it's Saturday for me. So uh, have a great weekend. I'll see you next time.